Hello and welcome to another jungle tutorial. My name is Vakayu and I bring you a new patch 8.10 Evelyn gameplay breakdown to show how you can play around the new runa geckos and scuttle crabs. And a lot has changed since then, she's had some nerfs, a few things have changed about the meta and the game. However, the biggest change is of course, the removal of that movement speed on runic echoes in the addition of mana and CDR in patch 8.10. CDR of course being very nice as you don't build a lot of it in her kit, so that sort of just adds a little bit to your W uptime as well as alt uptime. And I'd be lying to you if I didn't say I was very excited about the 20 AP they're adding to Runic Echoes in patch 8.11, along with changing the bull path from last chapter to having Fiendish Codex in there. So it should be a bit more viable to build, well, not viable, but it should be a bit more efficient to build, and that added AP will be very useful. I still think we're going to miss the movement speed, but the added damage means that when you do have a fight, there will be more chance of success when you get off your full combo with the WE and three procs of your Q, at least let's assume prior to ultimate. Uh, you won't be able to move around the map as much, or at least flank as much, but when you do have that 1v1, you will pack more of a punch with your full combo. Alright, moving on to this game, we do have a nice little invade at the beginning. It doesn't always work out that way, but sometimes the enemies just AFK in a bush, and I'm able to actually pick up the first blood. I didn't want to waste my flash, but I would have if I had to. Now that we've secured this control and buffs are spawning, we know that Ramus will have to start his blue, and that gives us free range of taking their red. As I've said in many of my videos before, please pay attention to the map to see where wards are placed around you. And because I was doing just that, I noticed a ward placed over the wall right in front of the red buff. Now clearly as I'm Evelyn and he is starting his blue and he's Ramus, I most likely could take his raptors pretty quickly. However, I want to give them the illusion that I took the red and left. My Maka has warded my red so I can keep an eye on if Ramus counter invades my own buff. I loop around the red buff and steal his raptors while watching Ramus take my red buff. He's getting low on health because I clicked to have a look, so I'm not too concerned about him taking anything else in my jungle because that would be way too high risk for him. He also thinks I only did the red buff and perhaps went straight to my blue. So if he overstays, it's highly likely from his perspective that I might show up. Instead, I simply do the scuttle crab. Love that scuttle XP, even though I think they're a little bit overrated by most people in the early game. I take my blue buff, and now, just to make sure that he isn't on my raptors, I actually move straight there instead of doing wolves and grump. Normally, I would look to do a full clear with Evelyn just because... You know, it's really nice to rush at level 6. Now that I have the benefit of actually taking his red buff and his raptors, as well as taking my own raptors, I do attempt a gank in the mid lane, however Victor plays back, I watch his body language, indicating that it is in fact warded. So what I do is, I loop back around, and flank from the back side of the mid lane. Gragas has pinged to me that he has flash, he has ignite, he wants to go all in, and with our combined CC, ignite, and burst damage, Victor doesn't even have a chance to flash. An easy second kill for me, and I can really use this two kill start to snowball myself as well as other lanes. Upon grabbing that kill, I do check the Raptors just to see where Ramus is. Maybe he's venturing in the area. I run into him. I have the level lead. He can't really contest because his mid laner's down and he'd be 2v1 very quickly. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Just about two minutes here. I've done my Wolves. I've gone back. I've done my Gromp. Uh, I don't think necessarily in that order, but I made sure to position myself in time for that scuttle spawn, the one where it's alternating RNG, which I really hate, but nonetheless we can play around it. We try and intercept the Ramus, however the enemy bot lane has collapsed more proactively onto my bottom lane as they weren't pushing up too much. In this case, don't try and do too much, it's very clear that Leon is going to die 3v1, Vayne can't really help, I can't really help, they have the bitty angles, we have cooldowns, there's really no point forcing it. Let them grab the kill, reset, you can get them later. And of course, you should be eyeing the minimap and paying attention to your teammates all over the map, not just in that immediate vicinity that you're playing. And so I see Gragas fighting Victor. I move straight up because I do have the scuttle speed up. I do have celerity. And what happens is I actually commit everything here. I charm him and I make a flash max range Q. Yes, I actually hit my Q skill shot at that max range. We're able to pick up a third kill and now we're well and truly on our way. I scout around for Ramus's Raptors, he's taking them so they're down, that's good to know. I help Gragas push a little bit and now I intend to do a full clear on the top side of the map. There's also no option for me to go and take that red buff again on that second spawn because my bot lane has gone back, Gragas has gone back, and I don't know where Ramus is and so even though he's most likely doing his blue buff on that second rotation, I do not have any river control, ward control, or lane priority to invade that second red buff. So it's rather safe for me simply to clear my Raptors again take the Krugs and get that red buff of my own under control. From here I can go back, buy, and move on down to the bottom lane. And here you will actually notice that I don't go straight to my blue buff, I don't do Grumpet under Wolves, I hit immediately bot lane. Why? Because you need to pay attention to when you have your ult, when your team has their ult, as well as when the enemy have their ult. Currently Thresh is level 5, we know this. It's much easier to exploit a level 5 Thresh without his ultimate and grab a kill, maybe burn some other sums by Jinx, then simply to, you know, get my level 7 and my blue buff, and then he gets level 6 and we don't actually grab a kill. Gragas has also been nice and proactive, he's pushed the lane out, he has a lead on Victor, we both throw him down, 
I chain CC the Thresh with Leona. Gragas is a bit of a woofed alt and a messy dive, but nonetheless, I grab the kill. That's great. And from there, we actually see Ramus on the top side trying to gank our top laner, which means that's an absolute free Mountain Dragon for us. And now from grabbing the Mountain Dragon, I can do my blue buff to reset my mana, which I actually give up to Gragas, sadly. I don't often do this, I will admit, but he is playing very well. He's roaming around and he is using his mana, so I don't really need it with the new jungle item and talisman. Might as well give it up. I also grab the Gromp. And now instead of doing Wolves or perhaps going back to Spend, I exploit the fact we just burned summons from Jinx and Thresh. And even though my ADC isn't there, it's very easy for me and Leona, who's camping out on a bush, for us to easily kill the Jinx and the Thresh. This is all part of those extended sequences I like to speak so much about. So I do try and give the kill to Callista, but in doing so, I accidentally go slightly too far and I have to ult to save myself, just to be sure. I wanted to save my ult, and this game, I won't show everything, but I do kind of hold onto my ult a little bit too much to just secure kills rather than just get off the damage, which you shouldn't always do. Try and use your ult to secure kills rather than give them a chance to escape. Now regardless, we're able to get another double kill, Callista and uh, Leona can simply push the bottom lane. I take my wolves, and again, there's extended sequences, right? Staying out on the map longer than you would necessarily intend to. Yes, you're hoarding gold, but you have to keep an eye on what the enemy's doing and what your team's doing. In this case, Yasuo was very low, Ramos was very low, and I don't need my ultimate to help pick them off. I simply go ahead with Maokai and we grab that double kill. Very, very nice. And now in the interest of time, I am skipping ahead two minutes again, but what I did do is go and buy and then return to the top lane and I almost killed Yasuo again, but I was holding onto my ult, holding onto my ult, and knew his wasn't down, but his came up before mine and I died. Okay, so I've headed back down to the bottom side of the map. Now I want to keep ganking bot. I want to keep feeding the Callista. However, despite me pinging him on my way, she has engaged 2v1 with that wonderful ego and she dies. But Leona and I are fortunately are around in the area and we're able to pick up a double kill. And from here, it's very important. I'm not trying to go back. I don't have enough gold to sort of get new items. But what I do is I roam around with my support. Now, supports and certain healers might not do this but they also might overdo this, if that makes sense. A silver support might not know why they simply roam around the map all the time trying to gank everything, but it's a good thing to do. So if you can follow your support here, get some deep wards into their jungle, especially versus Ramus, perhaps look in the tower dive and that low victor, which unfortunately doesn't pan out for us. It gives you that added bit of pressure and vision control that you otherwise wouldn't have, and that security of having someone with you while you set it up. And from here, I'm simply able to rotate over, take my Gromp and plan to give the blue buff to the Gragas again. However, my eyes are always on the minimap and I can see the enemy collapsing onto the mid lane where my team is. Now, in this situation, if you are Callista, don't flash. You're dead, you're locked down, there's no point losing your flash in this situation, you're not gonna live. And I rotate immediately over and this is one of the situations where I don't let my W fully charge up on the Yasuo. I didn't, I kind of wanted to let it charge up, but at the same time, it might have been a little too late, and actually I should have held off, I think, but nonetheless, I'm able to get off my full rotation of burst damage, and I ult towards the enemy, because I know I should at least be able to closely kill Yasuo. I misjudge it slightly, but I'm able to smite him down, and then my team comes up and we're able to collapse in the victor. I know I do more damage than him at this point, he's quite far behind. Now as a jungler, the onus is on you to control those epic monsters and baron spawns, rift heralds ping when you want your team to rotate with you. Yes, they might ping it at certain times, but you need to communicate through pings or words if you're ready or not to take something. Now, in this case, I type in very clearly in chat that I want to do the Fury Drake, the Fire Drake, and we immediately rotate over and take that. That's a huge swing for us, by the way. Following that, we have a bit of a kerfuffle in the top lane again. I die. It's a little bit of a sad situation. They activate their Herald and they're able to grab some towers. So even though, yes, we have a huge kill lead, you can see that, you know, we're on 21 to 9. That's great for us, but we've lost quite a lot of towers. They have more towers down than we do. So it's important that our entire team is on the same page with how we want to close out this game. And that's sort of the focus of this video here. And so now how do we recover from a messed up play in the top lane where we actually lost towers to a Rift Herald and we actually lost a few members? Well. In my case, I'm Evelyn, so I want to use my positioning and my lead to make sure I eliminate someone from the map. In this case, I don't really like Victor's when they do get to the damage prospect because his CC and bows basically just kills me in two seconds. Same thing with Thresh, Ramus can taunt me, Jinx can snap me, you know, I don't really have much of an option. So when I see the Victor here, I actually use my full combo, flash, everything, and I kill him before I anticipated I would. So I'm using my flash, my W, all my abilities, including the ultimate, without too much thinking, just sort of programmation to get that full burst. It's a bit of a waste of my ult, but nonetheless, at least he's removed from the map and I've defended that mid tower. And from here, we can push out. And the Maokai is getting a little too aggressive, and this is a key component of Evelyn. You don't always have to use your W for that burst. You don't always have to use the W for engage. You can use it as a deterrent and for zoning, and I'm going to use it quite a lot in this game for that, considering their enemy team comp. So pay attention to those uses and see if you can even put that in your own game. 
And from here, we look to push the top lane where Callista is. We're moving as a unit. We're trying to control their jungle, take their camps. Because when you have this lead, guys, you want to make sure you're taking their camps all the time as well. You don't want to sit around an ARAM or just go to lanes and push towers. Whenever you're moving through the map, take camps that are up, deny them that golden experience. Not just to scuttle that you're, everyone's obsessed with, but regular camps, good old boring wolves. Take them away, deny it from the enemy. Unfortunately, the Maokai is being a bit of a tree and, you know, he dies mid lane. And now they know that Callista stops, so they're just going to push straight down the mid. There's not much we can do about it. So we do take their blue buff and we have to go all the way back. And what happens here is a little bit of a tilt sequence. Gragas thinks he's more fred than he is, and so he kind of goes in 1v4 and dies. I think I'm more fred than I am, and I kind of think, oh, I, I can easily burst him. However, when I go in, I forget that they have a min millions amounts of CC, and I get bursted. So this is definitely the I regret my decision moment, because from this misplay, we lose an inhib. Even though we're way up in kills, even though we're doing quite well, they're still having a really good teamfight, and they're pushing objectives very well. So, two things here. When you have this lead, don't make these mistakes, don't be overconfident, and two, if you're behind like them, look at how they can make a pick and turn it into multiple objectives and things that can delay and let them scale. Very important. And as I said, the next few minutes were definitely messy, but we had to sort of re-put our foot down, say, no, we have the lead in this game, we are the confident team. And so we have a bit of a messy fight in the, in the mid lane, but the Gragas does, I don't know, some kind of disgusting amount of damage. I follow up with my own damage and ultimate, I smite the Yasuo, I grab a triple kill, and yes, we're not able to sort of get anything from this, but we delay the time that the inhib is down. Following that little triple kill fight, we are flanked off to the side trying to control the Baron area. And what happens is, is the enemy doesn't really know where we all are, especially me as Evelyn. And what I need to do is either zone them with my W or find some kind of pick, you know, thread the needle. And in this case, I use my W to zone. And what happens is, I've used my W to CD, so they think they're a little bit safe. But I do have quite a lot of damage already. I've got my Lich Bane completed. I have my Salt Boots. And I just flash in with my Q, E, and R, and that's more than enough to kill the victor. Now, they've lost a person, and they're pushing up the mid with Yasuo to try to get our Nexus turrets, at least. And they do manage to get one, which is kudos to them. But we are able to defend just because of their inferior numbers. And this is one of the best things you can do as the game goes on, is killing one or two at a time actually disjoins their death timers completely. So, when you have five, they'll have three, or they'll have two, or they'll have one. And they can't really do anything about it. And that's really, really useful for you when you're trying to secure those towers and dragons and barons and such things. So, as we are able to defend our base, Maokai TP's in, we have Callista, so my smite isn't really that necessary. We manage to collapse and kill the Ramus and take that free Baron. And from here, it's a case of siege. So, to close games out like these, where you've had a really strong early game, you've had an equal mid game where the enemy team has actually got a more objectives than you, specifically an inhibitor and you've made some picks to get yourself back into control of the game, you want to siege now. You want to go what I like to say around the world, I think many people have used that kind of term before, but it's simply taking all their inhibs before you dive ARAM the Nexus. You know, there's no point. You have Baron, we have good zone with the Gragas ultimate, and I'm flanking and using my W off cooldown to zone the Jinx and sort of keep their team a little bit spread apart. They never know when I'm going to come in as Eve and assassinate one of them, and even if I don't ever do that, it's more than enough to keep them spread apart so that we can siege and take the inhibitor. Now, if Baron is spawning next, right, if that's the next objective, you want to take the bottom in here because it's the longest way for them to wave clear and to rotate to defend the Baron. So as that might be the next objective eventually, and we might be sieging top without Baron, it'll be a good thing to fall back to. Regardless, once we have the bottom inhibitor down, all that's left is top. My team have some gold to spend. Gragas and I move to take that Mountain Drake, and now I see Victor over pushing. Now remember guys, if you're Evelyn, if you are fed, and even if you're not fed at this point in the game, you should have enough items that anyone over pushing to decompress those waves of theirs is free target for you. It's free food. This will allow us to push up the top lane without Victor pressure and means the enemy team can't really do anything until he respawns. Any 5v4 is suicide for them and will end the game immediately. So, and for the final fight, the enemy have realized, hey, this evidence consistently somewhere and just using W to spam, maybe we should just straight up engage on them and Evelyn might not even be there. And it's a good move by them, however, the Jinx flashes away from my potential W just to be safe into a team, but the Yasuo and Thresh both get completely baited in. I don't kill anyone, but I do get off a ton of damage on them, I ult out, and this forces Thresh and Yasuo to both flash to kill me, and I'm quite unlucky not to kill the Thresh anyway in the 2v1. And because of this, because it's a 2v1 on me, that means it's a 4v3 for my team, and they can easily clean that up and end the game. So hopefully you can learn a few things from this Evelyn game, Overall, Runa Geckos doesn't really make too much of a change to Evelyn, how you play her. The buff to AP will be really, really nice. The movement speed is missed when I'm trying to catch up to my team around the map, but I don't think it's the end of the world. I do think the added AP will be nice in the next patch, but I'll, again, I'll play her and then I'll, get, I'll give feedback if something's really drastically wrong. 
Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share and comment if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe if you want to see more jungle videos coming soon. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.